We are staying on top of breaking news for the start of your 11 minutes of nonstop news here at 6 this morning. An Ohio State Highway Patrol trooper hurt in a crash. A Springfield Township firefighter then hurt in an early morning fire at Woodside Terrace. Our Mario Dunham is live on the scene of that fire. We start there. So Mario, what are you learning this morning? Well, hey, Tim, uh, we're learning that a uh, family of four was inside the house when uh, the woman in the house smelled smoke and she woke up right before the fire alarms uh, went off and she was able to get her family out of the house. We're in the back of the house right now. And as you can see behind me, there's siding and insulation that are totally exposed. The back of the house is completely out. I can actually feel the heat from the house right now. Um, as we pan to the right, you see the back of the house is completely destroyed. They said the house, uh, unfortunately, is a lost is lost due to the fire. The front has caution tape around it just to keep everybody away from the, the house at this time. When fire came on scene, a firefighter actually uh, was injured in the fire. He was taken to the hospital. At this time, he is currently okay and will be um, all right from his injuries. At 2 a.m. when you're in, in your bed sleeping, um, that's what's gonna wake you up. Uh, you're not always going to wake up coughing and choking to the smoke. So uh, smoke alarms are absolutely paramount uh, in every home, in every room, especially where you sleep. The scene is clear, but a fire marshal is on their way to see how the fire started. Live in Springfield Township, Mario Dunham, WTOL 11. Mario, thanks for that live update. They're also breaking this morning, as we told you about, an Ohio State trooper recovering after being hit overnight. A lot of damage to his vehicle. This happened just before midnight on the Ohio Turnpike near Fremont. Troopers tell us the trooper was parked in the emergency crossover between the east and westbound traffic when a pickup truck traveling west hit his patrol car from behind. The trooper was taken to the hospital. No word this morning on how serious his injuries are. The driver of the pickup was not hurt in the crash. Your 11 minutes of nonstop news continues now with a look at your forecast. We want to get over to meteorologist Ryan Weekman because we have another hot one, a scorcher as we call it. Ryan. Yeah, H-A-W-T, hot outside for today is the way we're describing it. Temperatures near 90 degrees this afternoon. Our stretch of very warm mid-May weather continues and radar starts off the day with a dry note for this Tuesday. 63 right now in Toledo, but it's 70 in Port Clinton, 72 in Marblehead, and 70. 70 down in Tiffin as well. So we've got some very warm readings to get started this morning. Our bus stop forecast says get ready. It is going to be hot after a mild morning. That high temperature gets up near 90 for this afternoon. Do have the latest on an alert day for tomorrow. The latest on the threat for downpours and thunderstorms coming up. Right now, let's get it over to Stephen for the latest on our traffic tracker. Here's a look this morning at a roadway. So let's zoom right into I-75 here, right at Alexis Road and uh, out the door uh, on this Tuesday morning. Road conditions looking great. Monroe to downtown traffic moving at about 65 miles per hour, and we are crash free. That's a look at your Contrada Law Firm traffic tracker. Alan Block is no longer the CEO of Block Communications. That's according to his spokesperson. The company owns the Toledo Blade, Buckeye Broadband, and other media outlets around the country. His removal comes after he filed a lawsuit against his twin brother, John, against Block Communications and other family members two weeks ago. A former University of Toledo football coach is suing the university for $10 million. Craig Kuligowski filed the civil rights and wrongful termination lawsuit in federal court in April. According to the complaint, Kuligowski claims the athletic department fire, fired him because he was the wrong age and the wrong race. It went on to read the university cited he was not representative of the student athletes as he was not young and he was not black. Kuligowski says it did not matter that he was an alumni and a former Hall of Fame athlete. He was fired in January of 2023 after an investigation into sexual harassment allegations. The complaint claims the investigation found no evidence of harassment. 
We reached out to you Toledo for comment. They sent us this statement reading in part. Craig Kuligowski was terminated for violating the university's non retaliation and standards of conduct policies. U Toledo is committed to creating a safe and welcoming environment for everyone and holds our leaders to high standards. It is imperative that all employees follow university policy and provide educational and working environments that are free from discrimination and harassment. We'll have the full statement posted, or we do right now, posted on WTOL.com. Cleanup is underway this morning after a severe thunderstorm tore through Sandusky and Ottawa counties. You can see here a barn in Fremont had its roof ripped off. Trees were snapped and debris was thrown in all directions. One homeowner tells us his garage door flew more than 50 feet away from his property. There was no one here when all this happened, which thank God that's the right time to have it happen. So we can rebuild. We can always rebuild, but nobody got hurt. That's the most important thing. McCord bought the farm last year and is planning on turning it into a venue for festivals, live concerts and other parties. He says the damage will only set him back a little bit. With even more severe storms heading our way, Consumers Energy says hundreds of its workers are prepared and ready to help. Those strong winds and severe storms mean power outages could be likely. And officials warn everyone to stay away from downed wires and everything they are touching, adding to call 911 if you spot a wire that's down. Lastly, always be alert to crews working along the roads. The city of Toledo is continuing a series of meetings about your water. A water affordability open house is tonight from 530 to 630 at Friendship Park Community Center. You'll learn about improvements to the wastewater treatment plant, customer service enhancements, and you'll get help enrolling in the water rate affordability program. Mommy residents may be seeing higher water and sewage rates in the future. The current water rate is $12.90 per 1,000 gallons while the rate for sewage is $12.65. Now, if Ordinance 15 passes, those rates will increase through the next five years. Mommy City leaders say the increases are needed so they can address infrastructure improvements and other needs, but some community members are worried the new rates will affect their daily lives. We have to maintain a water department, we have personnel, we have wages, we have equipment we got to buy, uh, external contractors we use. I mean, there's a whole host of why things going, have gone up. I was paying $100 for a family of four for water and sewer, and now I'm paying $150 for just two of us. It's going to go to $300. It's, yeah, it's just astronomical, the, the, the increase. The ordinance had its second reading last night. It will be voted on at the next Maumee City Council meeting on June 3rd. And meanwhile, the city of Toledo is considering a new sewer rate proposal. Council's proposing an increase of 3.75% every year until 2028 and then 3% in 2029. A reduced rate would be available to eligible customers. First readings expected at tomorrow's city council meeting. If passed, it would take effect July 1st. It is 6.08 and we're counting down three things you need to know before you head out the door this morning. Number three, State Representative Michelle Grimm of Toledo expected to introduce the Junk Fee Elimination Act later today, which would require businesses disclose all fees. Under current law, businesses are allowed to advertise a price for a good or service that does not include all mandatory fees and charges. Number two, the United States gaining 40 new citizens today. The U.S. District Court holding a naturalization ceremony this morning at Wildwood. And number one, Toledo Police's latest traffic blitz is happening now until June 2nd. Officers will focus on offenders who are speeding, not wearing seatbelts, and who are operating vehicle under the influence. The blitz is happening at the same time of the national click it or ticket campaign. The city of Rossford will unveil something new at its annual Stroll the Street event, a mobile visitor center. There will be a ribbon cutting ceremony for the unit at 530 tonight during Stroll the Street. And this morning, our Maya May is getting a look at all the fun you'll have at that event. And there's something new the city's trying to do. That's coming up at 630 this morning. It is time now to get another check of that forecast. Want to bring in meteorologist Ryan Weekman and Ryan. We've been kind of marveling at how early it seems the sun is appearing in the morning. Absolutely, Tim. We're uh, one, two. There we go. Just ticked over to 610 this morning. We are officially 
have our sunrise and we have these clouds though in the way we got to get these out of the way, uh, but we've officially hit it here. Yes, a beautiful start to the day here. Enjoying this daylight earlier and earlier in the morning as you were alluding to there. Look at our forecast 90 degrees on the way forward today. Our sunset time doesn't happen until just before 9 p.m. tonight. We're reaching some of the weeks that we have our longest daylight of the entire year. So if you love this, you hate the darkness of winter, get out and soak it up today in the next couple of weeks here as we head towards the beginning of summer. Radar and satellite here looks just fine for us locally. Now off to the west, we've got a pretty big complex of thunderstorms rumbling across Iowa back towards Nebraska. This is where they're under the gun for widespread severe weather today from Omaha, Kansas City down to St. Louis and up towards Wisconsin. You can see that's where the bullseye is for severe weather and this will play an impact and a role in our forecast for later on for today as well as we do expect the potential for some of those stronger thunderstorms to exist. So our alert day for Wednesday here. Good news because of some of these downpours, the severe weather threat is actually going down a bit for our forecast for tomorrow, but there is still the chance for some strong to severe storms. I'm going to have a look at that full forecast for tomorrow, including the hour by hour details of it coming up in just 90 seconds. Stay with us.